guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody okay guys so i welcome everybody for this uh, mock oski today right before your practicals now uh, this is the first oski and the, i'll give you exactly 4 4 minutes per uh, slide write down your answers and please share them in the chat room everybody who is there in the class needs to be there in the chat room as well otherwise you can write yourself also okay okay so this is a, a little bit of video is there okay here yeah, that's the video and i'll bring it back to you because in that case you'll not be able to see the questions yes so what is the name of the surgery what do you mean by rule 4 what is the mechanism of this uh, procedure and two advantages and if i get confused i'll cut your marks right that's the way i have trained you make it easy for the examiners all right so many of you writing uh... okay four words many of you writing four what do you understand four words what it is it's 40 words guys okay you know what four word current is what okay now uh... yes so we have rule of four this is uh, the ovarian drilling uh, everybody understands so no brainer the surgery shown is ovarian drilling as you can see over here also known as laparoscopic ovarian drilling lod okay mostly for pcod women who are anovulatory mostly they are it is for that even with loam and let rose if they not ovulating we go in for a clean pcos for uh, thing uh, lod ovarian drilling now now um, what is the rule of four to so four drills okay four drills four punctures right here 40 watts and 4 mm depth you go not more than 4 mm because you are it will be destroying the tissue of the ovary there so four drills four punctures 40 watts and 4 mm not 4 watts 40 watts okay the mechanism of action is very simple it is just destroying a portion of the theca cells and they are responsible for producing androgen the male hormones and you're trying to reduce that and you do you want to decrease the androgen so you're trying to just destroy an area of the theca wall or theca cells which are androgen producing and it will restore the hormonal hormonal balance just remember this word restoring the normal hormonal balance okay and of course two disadvantages everybody has written right the two disadvantages are decreased uh, ovarian reserve and adhesion formation good excellent we now starting with the next next station okay let's not discuss okay so yes this is um, the subcutaneous uh, dmpa i think uh, most of you have not been using the subcutaneous dmpa in, uh, in many centers but yes this is subcutaneous dmpa and uh, what is the dose here is the dose the typical dose is <clears throat> 104 mg and you use it like you use uh, the intramuscular dmpa every 3 months 12 weeks for effective contraception see i'm also using the sources from which we got the answer so you should just uh, uh, just uh, keep checking on the sources in case you're not very see from wherever i have uh, seen it can be switched but i'll have to reconfirm this because many of you have written down it cannot be switched can you give me the reason why you guys are saying so uh because that's been uh, seen at uh, two three places the answer was that it can be switched okay now tell me from where are you people getting this uh, answer that it cannot be switched what is the reason one thing is there i am seeing this answers many of you have written down let me see don't just see each others and write down guys okay that's also very important because there was no such funda that you cannot exchange you can exchange most of the uh, contraceptive methods implants in place of uh, you know uh, intra intramuscular injections intramuscular with the subcutaneous injection there's no sense that it should not be but if there is a, a reason maybe you can just let me know and i will be able to more than happy to just uh, reconfirm it from the uh, appropriate source in the meanwhile in the meanwhile we can go on to the next one when can the mp uh, injection start uh, in the contra uh, immediately following the situation so preferred in terms of the smaller needle so see uh, switching you understand the meaning once the effect of this mp dmp has finished with the intramuscular then we are giving the subcutaneous one so uh, if what the question means is that the needle alone that is a different you can't switch but if uh, the method of contraception has been told about that is we uh, 
finished with the DMP and now we give the intramuscular because we gave a, a subcutaneous dose, that we can do. Okay. In place of each other. Well, the question is very specific. Can they be uh, switched in place of each other? In that case, it's yes. The needles alone? No, you can't. When uh, can the uh, DMP injection be started? Following months, so immediately after postpartum, you can start it any time, six weeks to six months. It's absolutely right. When a patient wants to switch from hormonal method, can we start it immediately from one to the other? Okay, no, we do not have to unnecessarily wait. And if um, uh, for missed abortion, immediately to one week. Yes, all of you are right in that. Immediately after miscarriage or in the first week. No problem. Don't even have to wait for one week. You can immediately start. Okay. Next, All right, guys, time is up. Time is up. We will be discussing this over here since we've already discussed so many times the pop two classification. Uh, like I said, uh, so many things I've done towards the last hour and have, uh, you know, not been able to properly organize it well. Now, here we have minus three, minus three. Everything is in place except for the cervix, except for the cervix, which is literally coming out. So definitely it is stage three only, but it's cervical elongation because everything else is, is in place. So over here, definitely it is felt. POP system, which is used to measure, and it is the C's plus two. That means we're talking about stage three prolapse, but it's not stage three alone. Uh, it is not the uterus cervical descent because had that been, you know, this thing also uh, would have been there. See, the question is that we are seeing this C point coming down. C point is actually the cervix. Okay. Now, if along with the C, entire utero vaginal thing is coming down, in that case, even B, A, and B, P will also come down. Isn't it? But they are at their place. That means only cervix is descending. All right. Now with you people also, I'm uh, improvising my answers as well because right now it's not the utero vaginal descent. It's just the cervical elongation. Everything is in place. Had it been an entire utero, uh, you know, utero vaginal descent, it would have been the whole thing coming down, and BA and DP would also have come down along with it, the entire support system. But it looks like everything is in place. It's just the cervix which is getting elongated, which is absolutely true. What you people have written down, it is stage three, but mostly I'll just write down over here. I'll improvise and I'll write down. It is cervical elongation as well. So you, you are all right. Cervical elongation. And for that, the next question is, what is AP? AP is actually referred to the anterior posterior point located in the posterior vaginal wall. Remember this posterior vaginal wall. 3 centimeters proximal to the hymen. This was a question asked to me in my viva. So right one surgical modality since it's just it's just cervical elongation. We need to go for for the repair, not for sacral pulpoplexy because it is not it is not. Guys, if anybody is on the unmute, please mute yourself. Right for the repair. So this is. Is there anybody who? See, there are so many students right now in the class. I can't keep searching who is uh, on the unmute. And please mute yourself, everybody. Hold on, hold on, guys. Many students are unmute and I'll have to. Okay, guys. So, yeah. So, they are you, here you're using the forthagal modality because it's just a vital elongation. And write the four uh, muscles of the perineal body. Most of you have written down correct. Bulbospongiosis, superficial transverse perineal, deep transverse perineal, and external anal sphincter. Can you all hear me also, guys? Can you see and hear me as well? 
that's right so these were the question now the next now the next session you get 4 minutes so let's discuss this was a little difficult one because this is the <laughs> i was not expecting this kind of questions for you in your oski because this is slightly uh, you know over your um, expectations so this is obviously uh, the graph is actually a eurochromatic graph okay this is an investigation of eurochromatic how many of you written that let me see let me see uh, your answers Mm -hmm. It's a bell-shaped curve. Yes, that's true. Right, any two characteristics of a normal graph. So yes, it's bell-shaped curve. That's true. That's one. Please keep checking on your answers, guys. This is very important. There's a reason why you're in this class. And the peak flow rate should be around 30, 20 to 30 ml per second, which is the normal peak flow rate for females. Okay. You had to write down two characteristics, guys. Okay. That's very very important. Okay. This will also do. Very sweet. Very sweet. Who's this? Nikita, thank you. This is also this is also going to work. No problem at all. You can write down. You can take a snap. No problem. Very good. <laughs> if you're feeling difficulty in typing down, you can also do this. Write any four parameters which can be obtained from this graph. So you can find out the maximum peak flow rate, Q max, the Q average, the average flow rate, voided volume, and time to peak flow. Right? These are the four parameters that you can find out from the bell-shaped curve. Many of you have not written. Many of you are not giving answers also, guys. Please don't do this. You are here to attend the mock. Please be sincere. Answer. It's all right. Even if you're creating mistakes, you're doing mistakes, you're, you're going slow, it's fine. You're all practicing over here. You're not here to see others' answers. You're here to perform. Perform yourself. Look at it like an exam. Okay, then your question was... Uh, if there are two or more lower peaks with a prolonged tail, you know how it looks? Something like this, and then it's going like this. It's not ending only. It's a prolonged tail. What does it indicate? It means what? Most probably an obstruct obstruction. It's having some obstructive or dysfunctional voiding. Why? Because you're straining and it's not coming out. So you're straining with, with and some some leak is there, but you skip you you're keeping on straining and thus the, the, the stream is not finishing. It's not coming down. It's continuously dribbling. So you're having hesitancy followed by dribbling, right? So you're not exactly having a peak flow and then it's falling down. It's not nothing like that. You're continuously having small, small peaks and then it's long tail. That means it's dribbling, dribbling and dribbling. It's not coming down. That is what it is. Let me just put it like this. So, okay, can we move? Can we move to the next question, guys? So there are many of you in the class, but answer only five, six people are giving the answers. No, that's not going to work, guys. Hundred and some people in my class, okay, 109, 110 students are there right now. And only four, five are answering. What are the rest of you going to do in your exam? 